know there's so much to sing and play about here on the Chesapeake Bay. So many people, places, and activities to celebrate. This year has brought opportunities to enjoy our natural resources like never before. You know, when you think about it, it's people like you and me who enjoy the great outdoors, who are the original social distancers. For the past two Wild and Scenic Film Festivals, I've had the opportunity to stand up in person and tell you about some of my favorite places in the Chesapeake watershed. You know, the Native Americans have a concept of sacred places. These are sites where the forces of nature and culture intersect to create a near spiritual form of power. If you're like me, you can't fully explain what you feel there, but you immediately recognize that power of spirituality. In the past, I told you about red bridges on the hallowed headwaters of the Choptank River near Greensboro, Maryland. In my latest book, I wrote about how the area has been so important to indigenous populations and it was significant later as new cultures began settling in the area. I mentioned about how Harriet Tubman used it as a gathering place along one of her primary escape routes along the Underground Railroad and how in the spring the river just teems with thousands of silvery fish as they return to the same spawning grounds they've used for countless centuries. And I told you about Sharps Island, once the site of an Indian village and later a bustling resort smack in the middle of the Chesapeake Bay. It's now completely eroded away, but its power remains as habitat for many species of underwater plants and animals that live there. This year, I want to tell you about Rockfish Gap. I bet you've been there because Interstate 64 passes right through it as it crosses the primary spine of the Blue Ridge between the Shenandoah Valley and Charlottesville. The Gap was the site of an important Native American trade route, then later used by colonists exploring toward the west. The Gap was once visited by three former presidents when it was there that they created the University of Virginia. The Appalachian Trail passes through the Gap, and in 1850, a railroad tunnel was dug that became one of the busiest in the country. Maybe you've wondered, as I did, why they called it that. Why did they call it Rockfish Gap? It's a great story, but unfortunately one that doesn't end well. It's called Rockfish Gap because it was the headwaters of the Rockfish River, so named because the Chesapeake's favorite fish species would navigate from the Atlantic Ocean into the Chesapeake Bay and all the way up the river to spawn in the spring, a journey of nearly 500 miles. Along with the rockfish came shad, perch, and herring. Thanks to an ample food supply, Native American villages dotted the river, and historic records tell us of early colonists loading up barrels and barrels of fish and shipping them east to Richmond or north to Washington, D.C. and Baltimore. Now, sadly, the Rockfish River never lives up to its name because no rockfish swim in its waters. Thanks to the creation of concrete dams near Lynchburg and Richmond, the grand migration into the Appalachians was stopped. In the name of progress, hundreds of miles of critical spawning habitat was lost. This scenario has been repeated at literally thousands of other locations up and down the Atlantic coast, and now our beloved striped bass, or rockfish as we call them here, are in significant decline, as are other species that spawned in the river like shad and the herring. Fortunately, all is not lost. Thanks to the efforts of environmental organizations, including the Alliance, dams are steadily being removed in the Chesapeake watershed. In places where they can't be torn down, fish ladders and bypass channels are being constructed. This leads to hope, and who knows, maybe someday, even in our lifetimes, rockfish will swim freely up the river toward Rockfish Gap. If you're interested in visiting the Rockfish Gap area, now is a good time to go because that railroad tunnel I mentioned earlier that was built in the 1850s is set to reopen as a hiking trail. As you walk through the gap and put your hands on the ancient bedrock of that old tunnel, breathe in the cool, damp air, and I hope you'll pause for a minute and just feel the spirituality of what is surely one of the Chesapeake Bay watershed's most powerful places. Thanks and enjoy the film festival.